let me ask you some questions. Are you voting this year? If you are, then who are you voting for? And lastly, is your vote biblical? In other words, will your vote for either candidate in this year's 2012 election honor and glorify God? I think those are the questions that you and I need to wrestle with uh, for those of us who are Christians. If you're not a Christian, then this video won't make too much sense to you in the spiritual realm uh, because uh, it takes the Spirit of God uh, through the Word of God to inform the conscience of the believer to make righteous and godly decisions, and particularly regarding this year's election. For a pastor, and, and I am one, we are called to be ambassadors of Jesus Christ and as ambassadors we are all to, only to say what thus saith the Lord what the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords has commanded us to say and we find that in his word for the life of me I cannot understand how this issue regarding same-sex marriage and abortion is something that Christians are struggling to uh, to decide who or if they should vote in this year's upcoming election. I believe as a believer in Jesus Christ we should get our uh, commandments, we should get our understanding and decision making when it comes to clear-cut issues such as this from God's Word. God calls the unlawful taking of any human life murder and even most importantly the innocent life of a baby. Uh, anytime we support abortion and the, the unlawful taking and murder of a baby, a helpless infant, uh, that is murder. That violates the sixth commandment in Exodus 20, verse 13. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not murder. And that's what the word kill means in the Hebrew text. So for those of us who are Christians, I want us to understand that this is not something that is an isolated issue. This is not even something that is a civil rights issue as... Uh, uh, Al Sharpton or Otis Moss the, the third would so want us to believe which is just an out and out downright lie this is not a civil rights issue this is a theological issue in fact everything we do when it comes to right and wrong is a theological issue make no mistakes about it it is a theological issue because marriage was instituted by God himself in the garden he instituted marriage. He originated marriage between one man and one woman for life. To death do they part. He never instituted the marriage between two men or two women. That is an abomination that violates scripture. That goes against the original intent of what marriage is for. You cannot procreate with two males. You cannot procreate with two females. It takes a man and a woman to create a baby. It takes a man and a woman to reflect Christ in his church. And again, I'm talking about believers now because we are to represent Christ in everything we do and say. And so for those of us who are Christians, we have clear-cut commands and expectations from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on how we are to respond in this year's election. I myself personally am not voting for either candidate because either candidate does not line up to the biblical requirements for my vote to be cast on their behalf. Whether you support same-sex marriage as Barack Obama does or whether you support civil unions as uh, uh, Senator Mitt, uh, Governor Mitt Romney does, uh, both are violations of scripture because it is again an attack against the original blueprint of the family and that is marriage. Gays do not have rights as heterosexual married couples do. To give gay rights the same rights as married couples to do have is a sin. Because it's one man and one woman. So to give married couples tax breaks, so to give marriage couples uh, uh, any other incentives, uh, to give gay couples that as married couples have, that is a violation of God's word. And we are to have no part of that. And I know what some of you are saying. Some of you are saying, well, well, then you're telling me not to vote. Well, according to God's word, the Bible tells us that we are to abstain from the appearance of evil. That we are not to do anything 
that violates God's word. First Thessalonians 5.22 makes that clear. Abstain from every form of evil. Every form. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter who it comes from. Every form of evil should be shunned. I want to lay some scriptures uh, to bear with us today because I want us to understand that this is, again, what the word of God says. This is not what Seiko Wood says or what your local pastor says or what your famous preacher on TV says. No, what thus saith the Lord. If God says it, then you and I as Christians are to obey it. First thing we need to understand is that anything we do is to be done to the glory and honor of God. It's the taking of a human life, i.e. a baby, glorifying and honoring God. Can't. It's murder. It is the support of same-sex marriages or civil unions in honor and, and, and glorifying to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? It cannot be because it violates the scriptures in and of itself. Second Corinthians 5 9 says the Bible says, Therefore we have as our ambition, whether at home or absent, to be pleasing to the Lord. First Corinthians 10 31 tells us whether we eat, drink, or whatever we do, and that includes voting, we are to do to the glory and honor of God. How can God be honored? How can God be glorified if you and I are going to the poll to support someone who violates the very will and ways of God's word? We can't do that. He tells us that we are to honor him in our bodies. Well, I know some people may say, well, you know, the woman has the right to uh, do what she wants with her own body. Not if you're a Christian, you don't. Matter of fact, even if you're an unbeliever, you, your body does not belong to you. You were created for God's glory. You were created to serve him, to love him, to worship him with your body. And most importantly, and most especially, the, uh, the believer is, has the power and the ability to do so. And to not do that, and to follow the ways of the world, and to follow the lie of Satan, and saying that your body belongs to you, you can do whatever you want to do with, do with it. God says, no, you don't. That's a lie from the pit. We have no authority to take the life of an innocent human being. It is murder. We give dogs more rights. We give whales and animals more rights than a human infant, a baby. Created in the image of God, mind you. Created in the image of God. So when you're following all this, this, this counsel and all these uh, statements from people like uh, Whoopi Goldberg and, and Joy Behar and all these people from The View and, and, and The Talk and, and, and all these other media outlets, you need to ask yourself the question, is their counsel biblical or is it worldly? Is it biblical or is it worldly? That's, that's, it's either one of the two. Is it of God or it is of Satan? First John uh, 4 5 and 6 says, they are from the world, therefore they speak as from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. He who knows God listens to us. He who is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. There's the difference, ladies and gentlemen. What are you listening to and who are you listening to? Either the spirit of God or the spirit of Satan. That's it. You need to ask yourself that question. To support anything that violates God's word is sin. I don't care who it comes from. And for you pastors out there, let me just say this to you. You have no right to say the opposite of what God's word says. He says when you do that, when you take God's word, like in Matthew 5, 19, he says, whoever then annuls one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do them, to do the same, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever keeps and teaches them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, this is your pattern of persistence of life where you can just do whatever you want to do and you want to teach people that they can do whatever they want to do without any consequence, without any repercussions. You need to question and ask yourself this. Am I truly an ambassador? Am I truly a follower of Jesus Christ? My challenge is for us as believers that we are called to pray for our leaders, but we are never called to support our leaders in sin. Don't go to the poll if you know what their positions are violates scripture. Go to your knees. Ask for God's wisdom and how we are to live lives on this earth and give the results and the trust over to God. God bless you.